So, as I say, distant descendants with mystical inclinations. Those sometimes have not actively even been a part of the pure blood lineages that ruled these secret societies for thousands of years, they have now come to be granted membership on commitment. This occurs, or has occurred in the past, when an organization's membership is actually on the decline. Just as the Danubian Druids broadened their restrictions when they were in danger of losing their tradition and culture, the Freemasons do so today. Between the ancient Druids and the Neo-Druids, there stands a long lineage of Masonic organizations, each claiming to have a secret knowledge about our history, as well as practical metaphysical lore. Nearly all secret, mystical, and magical cabals and sects have at one point been incorporated into the story and have common ground. We can assume from the elven histories that after its star origins, the magical tradition mainly emerged from the Mediterranean Mesopotamian region, forming a delta of Sumerian, Greek, and Egyptian tradition sharing the name Hermetics. Uh, the original Hermetic tradition is what modern occultists can trace varying secret traditions back to, making it an archetype for all magical systems. As a result of the knowledge migrating across Europe, different factions began to emerge in different times under different regional nationalities. Uh, the Dagon of the Nile region in Africa is one such tribe that came from Sumeria around the time the Tuatha Gyanu were leaving to move across Europe to the west, uh, among others. The great cataclysm that must have dispatched so many people in so many different directions has only been speculated as the Black Sea Flood or Fall of Atlantis. These Dagons possess star knowledge from the Sirius system set down in the Book of Kemet, more commonly known as the Egyptian Book of the Dead. Those familiar uh, with my prior work, Merlin's Magic, will notice the connection here concerning Egypt, um, and such as put forth the in depth in uh, the Numer Arcanum. But at any rate, the knowledge of the tribes is believed to not have originated with the Egyptians and Sumerians themselves, but have been taught by an interstellar star race. In writing these words, I am reminded, of course, of the work of uh, Zechariah Sitchin, um, who I, I've uh, not personally referenced in the past up until the Arcanum book, but um, he's produced thousands of pages of good research material that uh, seems to support the Elven histories. The modern-day uh, elitist practitioners of Hermetics trace some of their lore and traditions to the Gnostics, Gnostic Hermetics, uh, Gnosticism was the highest religion of the Hermetic Delta until the arrival of the Roman Empire. So after this, the tradition is developed in Western Europe where it's maintained by uh, the Celtic Druids of the Latin culture until it's finally pushed to the very shores of the ocean and uh, its islands, as well as the uh, northern Hyperborean reaches of the European mainland. Finally, it is forced underground but it is certainly not obliterated. The tradition is split in two between the secret mystics and the woods and the paladin rangers who rise up against the crusades, naming themselves the Cathars and the Knights Templar, uh, Merovingian Knights of the Temple, who um, were pledged to uphold the legacy and culture of the true church, which, which had descended from the Hermetic Gnostic stream but that was no longer being upheld in Rome. In the 1500s, late 1500s, a member of the mystic tradition who was in service as wizard to Queen Elizabeth I discovered, was taught, or carried an obscure branch of ancient hermetic tradition. John Dee was able to access the other world with the aid of a young alchemist seer named Edward Kelly. The system of magic um, they channeled um, became a philosophical form of practical Gnosticism and Hermetics into uh, a whole ceremonial tradition, cle clearly related to Enoch and you know, Anunnakian and the Nephilim and Genesis 6 and all that good stuff that we seem to 
uh, have forgotten in our age. The, uh, the similar nature of it to the ceremonialism of Sumerian Babylonian style of magic that's recorded on tablets or demonstrated even in Simon's Necronomicon is, is wholly, I mean, you, can, you cannot dismiss these, these parallels. Um, you know, making a comprehensive investigation of these connected but separate systems, um, several fundamental ideas overlap, specifically concerning elven histories and this angelic magic. Um, so these Renaissance medieval sorceries should only be studied really um, in self-honesty because of the nature of what they are. Uh, for example, uh, Donald Tyson, a modern wizard and author, adept in the history and use of uh, these practices, has suggested that the system of Hebrew-Sumerian mythos um, in this system is uh, in, in the book of the his book Tetragrammaton. Um, it's essentially like the key to the apocalypse um, that this world is being kept or sealed, gated away from something outside of us. You know, even Gerald and Betty Schuler on their advance guide um, to uh, to Enochian magic have, have suggested that the system was indeed the magic of the Necronomicon. And the case of the Necronomicon itself is written that the book is to be left to the wizards, men, and elves as a means to keep the energy current of the Ancient Ones out of our time space, sealed behind the gate of the Elder Gods. And this would make the magic of Enki, creator of human hybrids, and also the Mardukite line. Um, it would be a, a, a secret tradition, and also the Enosh Kano line, and Enoch is reported in the Holy Bible as being the offspring of Cain. So no matter <laughs> which way you look at it and the dissension of this, um, you know, take what I've just said here, fill in the blanks, do a little bit of research for yourself, and you'll see exactly what I mean.